easy for us to see our giftedness as an invitation to try to monetize that somewhere, meaning that my giftedness mm-hmm. has to be leveraged in my career or my mm-hmm. gift has to be leveraged like on my job. Like that's the giftedness rather than seeing God depositing in you, doing for you is so that you could continue to honor and worship God in the way in which you worship God is seen in the way you serve and build the faith community. Yeah. I love it. And it's like that, that's not a, um, that's not an optional thing in his mind. The way Paul constructs this statement. Yeah. It says this in the reverse order. Mm-hmm. And he starts off with the giftings and the serving and like that sort of stuff. And then he says, Oh yeah, yeah. By the way, um, don't think of yourself higher than you ought to. Right. Humility is the afterthought, not the foundation. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the sense of like, so pride creeps in when we, when we're allowing the identity of what we do to be actually who we are Mm -hmm. rather than saying, okay, this is my reasonable act of worship. I'm offering myself my whole life to God. I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing these things. It's almost a reminder that Paul says like, Hey, when you're, when you're worshiping God and you're doing all these things, Hey, don't, don't forget that this has nothing to do with you. (laughs) Right. Right. Which is so much easier said than done. Oh, it is. It is because here's what, here's the mistake I think we make. And I, and I make this right. Mm -hmm. This was not done by you but it was done for you. Mm. Like it wasn't, right. you didn't earn this or create the environment and it wasn't you using your giftings. That was this yeah. it wasn't any of these things, but it was done for you. Yeah. It's always easier for many of us to do things like, like give out versus receive. Mm. Right. In relationship, mm. if we, it's easier to maybe give love for some than it is to receive love. Mm. Wow. So there's a sense if we don't have the ability to receive from, from God, then it's going to, it's going to make everything that we do, it's going to have um, like a weird spin on it. Yeah. Like it's going to have a, a weird, it's like if I'm, if I'm hitting a golf ball that has um, like, if there's mud on the ball, right. You know, maybe I hit like a, a great shot, but the ground's a little bit soft, lands mm-hmm. in the fairway and has like mud on it. If I hit that ball and that mud's on it, it's going to create a different spin on, on yeah. the, the same ways for our life. Like if we're it, when pride's attached to us, it just puts a different spin. Wow. So our giftedness mm-hmm. can be from God. Mm-hmm. He gift you to teach. He could gift you to serve. He could gift you to do all these things. And without that proper perspective, basically what Paul's saying is you're going to be no different than everybody else in your culture. Yeah. You'll, you'll fit. Uh, and maybe, and maybe here's the, the cool thing for me. This is what he's talking about. Don't be conformed to mm. the pattern of this world in verse, in verse two. Yep. He's talking about being transformed when he's talking about kind of going a different way. Don't become so well adjusted to your society. This is what he's talking about. Mm. Where you live your life void of humility. Wow. Where you live your life void of acknowledging where this all came from. Yeah. Verse even leading up to conform, um, not being conformed, he talks about like in view of God's mercy. Yes. Right. So that's got to be the foundation. In view of God's mercy, do not you know, be conformed to the patterns of this world. As we're looking at giftings, if I don't have a, a, a good view of his mercy that got me that gifting, you know, talked about it, it's all grace that distributed through our gifting. I don't have a, a view that it's grace and mercy that got me there. Then I'll think that I did it on my own. And that think this thing was, was for me, yep. you know, and, and for my own sake. And it, to me, I think a great, a, a great application, like maybe you started a business and the business yeah. is successful. Like it's very easy then for you to go, man, I did this, mm-hmm. you know, maybe, Maybe you like insert whatever your field is, but it's easy to begin going like, no, no, I did this. Yeah. I worked hard or because I, um, I put in my time or 
or, or whatever. And then forgetting the fact of like, yeah, but the breath that you have in your lungs is a gift. Yeah. Right. Right. So like, even if your hands produce something, who gave you your hands? Like, yeah. Who, who gives you the breath in your lungs? Like, have like taking that like humble posture of going Mm -hmm. yeah at my best i'm just contributing right and then on a very practical note you know i don't know well yeah i think it could probably be said for everybody um we never get there in a vacuum you know Mm -hmm. and especially like in the christian community the fact that you are where you are is you you stand on the shoulders of people before you yeah. You know, so it's other people kind of serving you um, and serving the church and serving the community, just as Paul says, that um, a lot of times will even like help benefit us. Um, and then for us to have the pride that says I got here is to kind of ignore the fact that, you know, no, I actually have a, a grandmother who's been praying for me every day, you know, for since the time I was born, I, I've had pe- teachers who have sacrificed time and parents who've done this. And, you know, when everybody's kind of living out their, um, their grace, mm. um, and serving the community, we all benefit from that. Um, but that also requires us to realize like kind of where we came from, you know, yeah, a broken ego doesn't allow for space to think about the people that helped you get there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying to prove your own value and your own worth. Right. So what you said before, and you're like, in light of God's mercy, what a, what a great frame. Mm -hmm. Mercy is, I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. I'm not worth it. Like it's, it genuinely is that, that unrestrained favor and merit of God that is just, man, it's bestowed on you. Like, yeah. In light of that, that's how these other Mm -hmm. things happen. I think almost like a practical discipline for us right is maybe maybe taking time and writing a list of man who do i need to thank Mm -hmm. it's not when we're being served Mm. we're at our best when i'm serving and we look at jesus as the model we look at him as the as the exemplar like the incarnation is is jesus living out this text in terms of serving the community Mm. Um, in humility, mm-hmm. there is it is the greatest condescension in the history of the universe for the King of Kings, the Lord enthroned on high, to become flesh and dwell among us. Yeah, and Jesus doesn't come as a adult male; mm-hmm. he comes as a baby. Right born to a teenage mother like in a barn (laughs) it doesn't get more humble than that yeah like he goes from throne to horse trough right like so again following the way of jesus what does it look like for us to resist the thrones Mm. And find the barns. Yeah. Um, obviously, it shows that unity, but it shows diversity. Mm. And then it also shows mutuality. Mm. That, that these things, this is what the people of God represent. And again, yeah. I find, uh, I'm so encouraged that Paul writes this letter in a time where there's division culturally. He writes the yeah. letter in a time where there's so many things vying for our attention, so many things that, um, could we could be engaged in, and it's not so much different than where we find ourselves. Yeah. Where there may be some of these differences, and there may be some of these divides, and and yet what the people of God are called to do is to not everyone become pinky fingers. Yeah, but everyone understand like we're the design is to work together. The design mm-hmm. is part of one thing, and that is to be in Christ, to be yeah. the body of Christ, to be his, his bride. Like what a, what a beautiful thought, right? So the unity mm-hmm. is there, but then the sense of like of mutuality. Yeah. That no one is above the other. Right. No one is more 
valuable to the other. No, no mm-hmm. one gets to say, well, I'm this and you're mm-hmm. that. Like, no, we, we are, we are, we are in this together. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I just love that Paul throughout Paul's letters in the new Testament, you see him kind of, it's a, it's one of his favorite metaphors for mm-hmm. the, for the church that it's a body. He wants them mm-hmm. to see themselves not as division. And it makes so much sense for the Roman church who is Jew and Gentile. Right. There is this sense of stark difference, both yep. present and background. And he says, he says, no, yeah, we're one body. Mm-hmm. Like that has to be the call of a, of a church that is centered on Jesus. Yeah. And we continue to call, we, we continue to call for unity. Mm-hmm. And I think that one of the principal um, elements of unity that we see Paul talking about, it starts with humility. I, yeah. I can't see myself as one with you if I've already elevated myself in your mind. Yep. The church is to live and practice the way of Jesus in the midst of a culture that doesn't identify with that ethic. You see, humility then begins to emerge in the early church and beyond as a featured Christian ethic that actually begins to shape the way in which Christ's followers are known and the way in which Christians interact with their society. Humility is what we're marked by. Why? Because Jesus, who we are following and who we are submitted to, our King demonstrated humility from the very beginning.